All right, I think I have everything nice and set up, so let's go ahead and start. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Meredith and this is my knitting podcast, Mare Bear Made, where I talk all about my knitting projects. In my previous video, I talked about um, how I'm a nursing student and um, I've just recently come to figure out that I don't have an excessive amount of time to knit while I'm in school. Um, the good news is that I have also figured out that I can knit simultaneously while I'm reading or while I'm even in my lectures. It, it just has to be easy stocking at knitting. So either all per all, all knit. And yeah, I can do a lot of that. It's pretty, it's pretty mindless for me. So um, my intention while I was on like my spring break this last couple of weeks was to prep um, a few projects so that I have things to work on during my next course and I won't have to worry about any kind of difficult um, techniques that are needed for these projects, aka casting on large quantity of stitches, um, any kind of uh, shaping like raglan shaping or short row shaping for cardigans or sweaters, um, any kind of, I don't, I, don't, I don't think I have anything with lace, but that would be an example of something else. Um, any kind of ribbing. Yeah, basically I've just set up quite a few projects so that they're all at a point where all I have to do is either knit or purl consistently and not have to really worry about anything. And then that should get me through this semester. And then when I'm on my next break, I can do all of the nitty gritty stuff to finish those projects like binding off or ribbing at the ends of cardigans or sweaters, you know, eye cords, so on and so forth. So before I get into those projects though, I do have one finished object and that is what I'm wearing. It is my um, Novice Cardigan Mohair Edition by Petite Knit. Um, I don't have buttons on it yet. I did order some. I'm waiting for them to come in the mail, but I've honestly been wearing it constantly without buttons anyways. So here she is. Um, I love it. It's super lightweight because it's two strands of mohair held double um but it's it is very warm um i am only wearing like a tank top underneath this but i'm still quite warm um yeah i did it in drops um their mohair in the color chalk and it's a really interesting color um it's Hold on, hold on, my sister-in-law's dog is scratching at the door. Come here, you wanna say hi? Okay, uh, this is Gino. I don't think I've introduced him yet here. This is my sister-in-law's dog. Um, they, they live right next door, so she drops him off whenever they go out. Um, yeah, he is, ooh. <laughs> He's, he's a little sassy, little Pomeranian, but we love him. Um, and if you noticed that he's like missing a bunch of hair, it's because he has alopecia. Um, he lost <laughs> most of his hair, I guess, when he was like two or three years old and it just hasn't grown back. So yeah, he looks a little homeless, but he's cute anyways. We love him. Anyways. Um, okay, hold on. Now my sister-in-law is calling me. Okay, I think we're good now. Um, yeah, I don't know where I left off, but uh, point is that love this sweater. I'm wearing it constantly. Um, it's just nice and lightweight. Uh, the only complaint that I honestly have is that um, I I don't regret doing it in like a white color because I really like the white. I think it's like a nice clean look that I can wear out and about and feel like really put together. But to be really careful with it because it's white 
So I would definitely make this pattern again. I really like it. I, I enjoyed working on it a lot after I got past the yoke. Um, like it, I think it, it just, it's just a really nice fitting, easy piece that you can dress up, dress down. But when I make it again, I will be making it in, um, you know, like a darker color or, you know, I think I'd actually like it in that green color that Matt makes it in, in her sample. I really like that color. Um, but yeah, definitely a great staple piece if you're looking to do like a capsule wardrobe or something like that. All right. So first on my, my literal whip parade. Um, for projects that I have prepped for myself for this coming semester that starts in a couple of days. The first one is actually probably going to be the most difficult one to work on. Um, and I, the only reason that I even included it in this was because it is a gift for a good friend of mine who is having her first baby. Um, if you've been around on my channel for a little bit, a few videos back, I talked about how I had bought a bunch of drops Paris to make a baby blanket for a cousin to my husband. Um, yeah, that I have decided is not going to happen. And, um, it solely was because the semester that I just finished was so busy. I never had time to cast this baby blanket on and... Um, this cousin of ours is due in like a month and there's just no way it's going to happen. And it's her second baby. I, I don't, I, I don't feel as bad about it. And, you know, my sister and I went in on a nice gift for her anyways. So I just figured she probably, it, it's not a big deal. However, a good friend of mine recently announced that she is pregnant with her first baby so I decided to use the yarn to make the baby blanket for her first baby. So this is the knot stitch baby blanket. Um, and I believe the designer's name is Michelle Mikan or Michan. I don't know. I, I butchered it the first time that I talked about it on my channel as well. And if you are new around here, I, um, I, I butcher almost every single thing I possibly can. So I, the light is not doing it justice, but I am absolutely in love with this stitch pattern. It's just a very simple eight row repeat and, um, out of those eight rows, there's only two that are actually like intricate where I have to do something other than knit or purl. So I just figured I'll cast it on now, give me plenty of time to get it done before her baby shower. And the rows are long enough that I can do the knit rows, the purl rows, and that'll keep me occupied for at least like 25 minutes to a half an hour while I'm reading or while I'm in class. And then when I get to the rows that are, you know, that take focus, it takes me about 10 minutes or so to do those rows. Um, and I just figured I'll catch up on my YouTube podcast <laughs> during that. So this is definitely going to be my more intricate work that I work on, but I really wanted to make this for her. She's a close friend. Um, and I know that she's net worthy, so um, I needed to get a, get a go on it. And if I don't get much done on it during the semester, that's fine. I did, I casted this on halfway through my spring break that I just finished up, and this is how much I got done. So I feel like even if I only get a tiny, like a centimeter done during the next seven weeks, when I'm on my next break, I'll be able to get a nice chunk done then as well and I don't think her baby shower is until May so hopefully I'll be good but um yeah I did this in drops Paris um and I think the color is just off white but it is just so cute I don't know if it's catching it really well now but it just has these cute little like knots that almost look like 
like flowers or lilies or something, I don't know, but it's, it's just nice and simple. It's well written and the yarn is actually really nice as well. I don't know why I always rub things against my face, but I do. <laughs> I, I don't know how I feel about most cotton yarns, but this one is not too bad of the yarns that I've used to make baby blankets. The last time I made a baby blanket, I made it in um, like a cotton yarn that I got from Michaels and that felt like sandpaper compared to this. So, and I know that this is like, it's only drops. It's not like Egyptian cotton or anything super extravagant. So um, for it being a drops cotton yarn, I'm pretty happy with it for a baby. It'll be durable, hopefully. So that's the first one, my most difficult. <laughs> project a baby blanket and then um another cotton project that i'm working on is one that i've actually pulled out from the depths of my yarn stash um i actually cast this project on uh i don't know well over a year ago probably if i am remembering correctly so i cast this on definitely over a year ago um, again, it's yarn that I bought from Michael's, cotton yarn that I bought from Michael's, and actually it's leftover yarn that I used for a baby blanket. I had enough for this pattern, um, so I went ahead and did it, and then I think I got caught up in, like, garment knitting, and I just was bored with this, so I set it aside, and now I'm picking it back up because it's almost done, and it's stocking up so why not but this is the yarn i have absolutely no idea what it's called i think it's a like a karen brand um it's just a cotton yarn it's really pretty colors but again it's 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 kind of rough and it's um it's not like it's thick and thin i don't know if you can tell but it's thick and thin in places which is fine and I cast on, sorry, it's on kind of like a bunched up needle cord, but it's the hot water bottle cover by Maker Maker. It's just a free hot water bottle pattern on Ravelry. Um, as you can see, I'm almost done with it. I, there was just no reason for me to not finish it. And I figured since it's literally just knitting in the round, this was the perfect time to work on it. And um, especially because everybody's been like obsessed with the hot water bottle covers lately. Um, I I just, I felt inclined to hop on the bandwagon and finish the one that I stopped working on a long time ago. Um, but now since people have been talking about these hot water bottle covers all the time, it seems like everybody is doing theirs in wool or like wool blends and I did mine in cotton. I don't know if that's gonna be a problem. Like, I don't see why it would be, but I feel like I'm the only one that did it in cotton and I only did it in cotton because I didn't really think about wool. I don't even think I was using wool yet when I cast this on in cotton. I just knew that it was on gauge and wanted a hot water bottle cover and I wanted to use up the rest of this yarn. So I don't know, I guess when I finish it, I'll let you guys know if it like affects the way that the heat from my hot water bottle is conducted. I don't know, but very excited to finish this. I think the colors are really nice. Um, I'm just excited to get it out of my stash, quite honestly. And it will be nice to have a cover on my hot water bottle. It, I, It's kind of like, it feels naked without anything on it. So yeah, project number two, super simple, literally in the round. And even when it comes down to like the decreasing and stuff, I think it'll be easy enough. And um, I'll be able to manage that one night, you know, after I'm done studying. So there we go. Project number three actually the project that stirred up this whole like plan knitting plan for me so this is my cumulus blouse by petite knit and again i, I said it in my last video i wasn't going to touch this until 
school started and I haven't. I've held back, even though I really want to work on it. I actually really want this finished object, but um, I haven't touched it. So I'm not gonna talk about it too much because I did talk about it in my last video. Um, just the basics. I have it set up. It's ready for me to do sleeves, the body, um, and that's plenty of just knitting in the round. And then once I get all that done, I'll set it to the side and I'll do all the eye cord stuff in between semesters. Um, I am knitting this in Midnight Soul. That's probably not how you pronounce it, but uh, it's very soft. It's an alpaca wool blend, kind of like mohair thin, but it's got a little bit more body to it. It's very soft. I think it's a great substitute for mohair. And I really like the color as well. I think it'll be a great color for all year round. And I'm hoping that this won't be too warm for me to wear all year round. I'm definitely realizing very quickly that um, I get very warm very quickly in my wool garments. So, hold on one second, my dog wants out. So the one thing I did wanna talk about with this is that I did elect to knit this a size up from what the pattern recommends. Um, I don't typically do that. I haven't done that yet, I guess is what I mean. Um, I always knit what the pattern recommends me to knit for um, recommended ease, but I would like, I, d I do like to wear oversized sweaters typically outside of my knitting projects. So I decided to give it a shot with this and go a size up and see how I felt about that. Um, I'm hoping that it doesn't grow too much with it being made out of alpaca. I didn't think about that before I cast it on, but whatever. Worst comes to worst, it's just gonna be a really oversized, droopy, comfy sweater. Wish me luck with that. Okay, so the next project is another project that I pulled out of my stash that I had previously cast on and left left in my well actually I wouldn't say that I deserted it actually I had to stop working on it because this project was one of the projects that was part of the whole moth debacle and um the good news is that I did finish the first half of the project um so these are just a pair of vanilla socks um by the crazy sock lady I think it's her pattern just Okay, so editing Meredith here. Um, yeah, I, guys, I don't know why, but sometimes when um, filming podcasts, uh, things just like come out of my mouth that are not correct, honestly. And I, I just don't know what that's about. But um, yeah, I'm inserting this because while I'm sitting here editing this video, I'm realizing that I was so off base about this sock that it is not by the crazy sock lady and it's definitely not the vanilla sock pattern. It is actually um, a sock pattern by Summer Lee. It's called her I'm So Basic sock, um, which I say later in the video, but I just wanted to make sure that credit was given where it was due. This pattern is actually a Summer Lee pattern, not the crazy sock lady. Sorry. Just her vanilla sock pattern. Um, and I knit this in Huck and Ray fibers. And I don't know what what yarn it was. I know it was it was their like 80-20 sock base, but it was part of a collection that they did a few years ago. And I don't remember what it was, and I couldn't find my like my tag. Um, and honestly, I forgot to look it up before I started filming, so sorry about that. Um, and then for the cuff, the heel, and the toe, I used Focalana Arvata, and I don't know what color that was. 
Um, but the first lock turned out really nice. And um, it actually, this was supposed to be for my dad. And um, no, I'm sorry. These were supposed to be for my husband. And what ended up happening was that I used the wrong needle size. I cast on the right size sock, the, like the extra large sock, but I used like a needle, what size needle is it? Does it say? Here comes my husband, hold on. Okay, I I don't know. There's a bunch of interruptions today, but so I I think I was talking about the sock and what went wrong with it. And I messed up because the pattern which by the way is not her vanilla sock, it's the I'm so basic sock. I don't know if they're different, but that's what the pattern says the name is. Um and it says that she personally uses a US size one, but it also says most sock patterns call for US size one, 1.5 or two. And I, I cast these on a long time ago, so I'm, I don't know if I'm remembering this exactly correct, but I definitely cast on with the wrong size needle. Um, and I'm assuming what happened was because I cast on with a, two millimeter needle. So a zero, a US zero, but a two millimeter needle. And I think what happened was, is when I read that statement that said, most sock patterns call for a US one, 1.5 or two, I must've gone to the yarn store, said, hey, I need a size two needle and didn't specify if it was two millimeters or a US two, she gave me the needles and then I guess I didn't even think about it either because I just cast it on with them. And then lo and behold, I, first of all, as I was knitting the sock, like, you know, here and stuff, I was like, dang, this is like, these are really small stitches. This is going to be like a heavy duty wearing sock, you know? And then, um, Yeah, I tried to have my husband, I think, put the sock on and that was, oh my gosh, now my mom is calling me. Hold on. Okay, uh, this is like what, now the fifth try that I'm trying to finish this video. Um, and I have since talked on the phone with my mother and put dinner in the oven and so here i am i'm almost out of daily but i'm gonna try and give it a shot and hopefully finish this video i've only got uh two and a half projects up so to sum it up on this sock which is where i think i left off is that i cast this on on a two millimeter needle which is ridiculously small for a sock um but it did make a really great fabric uh, it was supposed to be an extra large sock for my husband. Obviously it did not fit him. So um, like this part, when I had him try it on, would not go over his, you know, like the heel part of his foot. So I decided these are now for me. They fit me perfectly. They're so nice, but they were attacked by mom. So they had to go in the freezer. Um, yes, so when I pulled them out, I had only done the cuff on the second sock and um earlier this week i think when i was really trying to like plan out in my head what projects i wanted to have for me what would be easy uh it dawned on me that oh a sock in the round on a two millimeter needle would be perfect because it's gonna take me forever to even get to the like to the heel portion and then um i can do the heel portion during my break after this seven week semester and do the rest the rest of the foot um, during my like summer semester or if I get really ballsy maybe I can do the heel flap and gusset one night I don't know but usually that takes a little bit of effort we'll see um but yeah so that's <laughs> this project I've now tried to finish with two interruptions in between um just a basic sock with hook and ray fiber yarn really beautiful can't wait to have it um I I very much look forward to wearing these with my Birkenstocks um, okay, so next is, um, 
I talked about this yarn in my um my video that I posted right before the new year um I had gotten a bunch of yarn from my family members for Christmas uh including this combination of drops flora in the color caramel and drops kid silk in the color almond I think I had talked about in the video that I wasn't entirely sure what I was going to use this for but I had highly considered casting on a balloon sweater by Petite Knit um I actually decided against that and then I considered using this to cast on um what was it Mm, it was some cardigan, not cardigan, it was some sweater that came out that, what was it? Oh, it was Petite Knits Elizabeth blouse, the one that is like a polo. Um, and I was like, this is going to be perfect. I'll use this for that. It should meet gauge. Hopefully I hadn't gauge swatched, but I just figured it would. Um, and that was my intention. And then every time that I went to go and cast it on, I just, something kept stopping me. It just did not feel right. And ultimately I just decided that I didn't think that this was a really good I didn't think that this was the color that I would want that sweater in. I want that sweater eventually. I really like it as a as a staple wardrobe piece, but I think I would like it in um a more neutral like a navy or a white or cream. This just seems like the wrong color. Um so instead, I decided to cast on an April cardigan. Um which I didn't really want to do a cardigan for this seven week semester because it's back and forth knitting. So knit a row, purl a row, um, rather than being in the round, which is what the Elizabeth cardigan or not cardigan, the Elizabeth blouse would have been. But um, I wasn't going to cast on a project just so I could have the, you know, the, um, the technique rather than, you know, what I want the finished object to be. So inevitably, um, I decided to cast on an April cardigan and I'm really glad that I did. Um, and I have already worked up most of the yoke. Um, actually the construction for this yoke is a little bit more, um, intricate than I've experienced before. Um, there's like multiple things going on at one time, which is really cool. Um, but I had to like put together like a little spreadsheet to keep track of what I was doing stitch wise, which was new to me. Um, and I'm glad that I did cast this on well in advance, um, because I needed to get this all out of the way. This is like the perfect example of stuff that I cannot, um, mentally, take on while I'm actually in the middle of studies. Like I don't have the time or the mental capacity to work on stuff like this. However, I'm almost done with the yoke. And then once I'm done with the yoke, I will be at the point where I'm just doing the body, which is back and forth, knit a row, purl a row, and doing the sleeves, which is just stocking that in the round. Um, and then I'll do all of the like term work in between semesters but so the the thing about this cardigan though is that I um today is I think Thursday I thought that I finished this yoke on Sunday so four days ago and I was so excited because I was like I got this done I'm good to go. I'm going to go ahead and get it ready for sleeves and it's, it's ready to go. Like I can work on casting on my next project, whatever. So I went to count stitches in their appropriate spots to see if I was where I was supposed to be, which I, I mean, I always do that just to make sure that I'm not off stitches or whatever. And, um, I very quickly realized that I was way off somewhere. I had missed a whole bunch of stitches or something had gone wrong. And so I um, 
<laughs> I went back and read the pattern and very quickly realized that I had been so excited about like getting to the last stop of the yoke that I misread the instructions and um, totally neglected to do increases that you have to do on the wrong side. So the pearl row <laughs> for every repeat. And so I had to um, tick back the entire, that entire portion of the yoke, which it was like 14 rows or something like that. Um, and because I hadn't marked like in my yoke where that section had started. So like taking off of the needles and ripping it back wasn't going to work because then I ran the chance of like ripping it back too far or not ripping it back far enough. I just, the, to me, the only thing that made sense was taking it back individually to make sure that I ended up exactly where I needed to be. Because again, like I said, I had an entire like spreadsheet worked up so that I knew these different things that were happening. The, it was different like counts that, that happened simultaneously but they're separate and so I had to come up with this sheet to make sure that I was on track for both and if I ripped it back instead of ticking it back I would have had no idea where I was or what I was doing so I had to tick back the whole thing the whole last section of the yoke which took me four days which is just cringeworthy and I'm sure that plenty of you know what I'm this feeling that I have felt because it only took me maybe a couple of hours to knit the section originally. So to take four days to take it back was just awful. And so now I, it's Thursday, like I said, I'm pretty sure it's Thursday. <laughs> and I've only got um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday until my next semester of school starts. And I'm already like pre-reading and stuff for school. So I'm already like my time for doing intricate knitting stuff has already started to dwindle. And um, now I have to go back <laughs> and knit that section again. And it's more complicated than I had originally thought it was. So I got to do that like in the next, I got to do it like tomorrow basically so that I'm ready and set to go. Because if I don't, I doubt I'll even work on this this semester. But um, I am very happy with the fabric. Um, I think that the flora, it's, it's nice and soft, honestly. Um, I'm interested to see how drapey it is since it is, I don't know what percentage of it is alpaca, but I, it's 65% wool and 35% alpaca. Um, I've not worked with it yet, I don't think. That. And then my very last project is something I haven't even cast on, but I decided that I am going to do it. And that is the June Top by Petite Knit. Um, and I'm going to do it holding Knitting for Olive Pure Silk. Um, and I think I, I think you hold it double. Um, mine is in the color Haze. Um, I bought this last year when they were doing like the fund, the fundraiser for Ukraine. Um, and I just never have gotten around using it. So I figured I would cast this on. Um, it's literally almost all in the round and spring is on its way. So I wanted a nice little tank top and yeah, I think it'll actually go really nice with this cardigan. And, um, I think that's really it, honestly. Um, <laughs> So sorry for all of the interruptions and I know I kind of sped through this last part but um, I hope that everyone is doing well and I am hopefully planning to do a much better job this semester of filming and uploading uh, regardless of school. So um, until the next time I see you guys, have a good one!